Hi, my name's Prue McRae and I'd like to introduce you to the Prumi Hemo Disc. With this innovative new product, you can take your braiding to the next level. I have designed this disc to simplify a traditional Kumi Hemo braid. And the reason I've chosen this particular braid is that it's absolutely perfect for jewelry making because it allows you to position the beads in straight lines along the sides of the braid. What I've done is I have developed my own system of slots, dots and numbers to guide the braider through the steps of this complex braid. So let's look at the disc. It's octagonal in shape and this is so you can find the correct positions easily. First of all, we're going to hold it with number one at the top. And what you'll see is that you've got a slot at the top with a dot beside it and you've got two slots at the bottom and there's a dot beside one of those. This is position number one, top and bottom. Then if we follow the arrow round to number two, you'll find again that there is a slot at the top with a dot and two at the bottom. This time the dot is on the other side. Again, we can follow the arrow around a small move this time to number three, and we have the same configuration with a slot with a dot at the top and two at the bottom, uh, with one, only one of which has a dot. And finally, we can turn round to number four, and again, one at the top with a dot, two at the bottom, and they've switched position again, so the dot is on the other side. The disc is the small size so that it fits your hand neatly and it makes it easier for beaded kumihimo to keep the beads in place and I've made the hole in the middle the larger size so that you can get larger size beads through it. What you're going to do with this disc is uh, use two different sorts of cord. So what I recommend for starting is that you use satin cord or you may have come across it called rat tail for the thicker cords and a thin beading cord uh, this is either Eslon or Ceylon and this will carry the beads and the reason we use two different sorts of cord is because you need the fine strong cord to get through the beads and hold them securely but you need the thicker cord uh, to give the braid substance and so that you can see the braid, a really attractive braid in the middle. And so for the thicker cord, I recommend something within the tolerance of one to two millimeters diameter. And for the thinner cord, that would depend on your beads, but normally you would use the 0.5 millimeter diameter. When you use a kumihimo disc, you will find that the slots stretch slightly. So what I have done with this disc is may suggest that you only use the thicker cords in certain slots and the thinner cords in other slots, so that the thinner cords can always be gripped by the slots on the disc. For, for your practice cord, I recommend taking about 40 to 50 centimeters because that's a comfortable length to use. And for this purpose, for the purposes of practice, we're going to take equal quantities of all of them and tie them in a knot at one end. Then hold the knot in the middle from underneath and slot the cords into the slots. Now this is where you need to be sure that you only use certain slots for the thicker cords and that will be the slots at the top and bottom at number one and at number two. Now at the top I'm going into a slot with a dot. So at the bottom I'm also only going to go into a slot with a dot. These dots represent the home positions for the cords. This is how you set the disc up and you only ever rotate the disc when the cords are on these home positions, the slots with dots. So I'm going to put my thick cords in top and bottom at number one and also top and bottom at number two. Again, dots with slots. And now I'm going to put the thin cords in the top and bottom slots at number three, the ones with dots again, and the top and bottom slots with dots at number four. And I'm just going to even it all up. 
So this is how you set up the disc. I now want to say a few words about tension, and this applies to all sorts of kumihimo. Although we're looking at this disc in terms of top and bottom, when you braid with it, it is very important to keep it absolutely level. So you want to keep it level. I'm tipping it up now just so we can discuss it. You want to keep the knot or the braid where the braid starts to form right in the middle of that hole. And you want your cords to be nice and tight across the face of the disc. You also want that knot to be level with the top of the disc. The knot may try to make migrate around that hole while you're working. Just pull it back into position. And this is so that you can maintain a nice, even tension. If you have your, your, your braid moving all over the place, you'll be exerting different pressure on different cords. When your disc is brand new, you might find that the slots that you're putting your thick cords in are really tight, but that will ease up after a while, um, after just a few uses. During those few uses, you will find that you might be tugging the braid out of position. But don't worry about that, just keep pulling it back into position. So now we're set up with the disc. All you need is a weight now. Any weight will do. I recommend something round about the 50 gram weight. And you just attach that to the knot underneath. The, the, the weight is not essential. Some people may prefer just to use their hand underneath. That's absolutely fine. You'll find your own way once you get going. I always use a weight though. Right, so now the braiding starts. And it is really easy because I've done all the hard work for you by working out where these slots and numbers are. So off we go, starting with number one. And bring it down to the unmarked slot at the bottom. Then you take the bottom cord, which is in the slot with a dot, and bring it up to that top slot at number one. And then you bring the bottom cord across. So now your cords are back on the slots with dots. Three moves, and it's very important to remember all three moves. Now follow the arrow round so that you've got number two at the top. You take the top cord and bring it down to the bottom unmarked slot. You take the bottom cord and bring it up to the top. And you bring the bottom cord across to that slot with a dot. So now both cords are in the slots with dots so I can rotate the disc, I can follow my arrow round to number three. Now I've got the thin cords. Again, I take the top cord, I bring it down to that empty bottom slot, I take the bottom cord, bring it up to the top, and I move the bottom cord across to the slot with a dot. We're in the home positions again, on the dots, all the cords are on the dots, so I can rotate the disc following the arrow round to number four. I take the top cord, and bring it down to the bottom unmarked slot. I take the bottom cord, I bring it up to the top, and I bring the bottom cord across. That completes the sequence. All the cords are on the dots, so I can now follow the arrow round and start again with number one at the top. All the time I'm trying to make sure that I keep that knot in the middle that I keep the cords as tight as possible, that I keep this knot level with the top of the disc, and that I keep my disc level. So I'm going to do another sequence for you. Top to bottom, bottom to top, bottom across. Turn to number two. Top to bottom, bottom to top, bottom across. Turn to number three, and I'm just tightening my cords up a little bit there. Top to bottom, bottom to top, bottom across. And round to number four, top to bottom, bottom to top, bottom across. That completes the sequence. So now I can turn round to number one again. And I'm going to speed it up a bit for you now, so you can see a little bit more braiding done at a faster speed.
So, let's see what's been happening underneath. When I turn the disc over, you can see the beautiful braid coming out nice and straight. And because I'm using strongly contrasting colors, you can see exactly what's been happening. Basically, that is as easy as it is. But the practice is really, really important because uh, you need to get into the rhythm of the braid. The braiding you may be used to is probably um, a different sort of rhythm. So the more you practice the rhythm of this braid, the more you'll get into the swing of it, the less you're thinking about the numbers and the more it just becomes instinctive. And that is when your braids are gonna come out really nice and straight and even. Because what you are aiming for is a braid with nice straight lines on it. Uh, you can see here I've used cords with strongly contrasting colors. So that's how I can see how straight my lines are. Uh, when it comes first off the disc, it may have a little bit of a twist to it like that, but as long as you can straighten it out with your hands, you've, that is an accurate braid. If there's a strong kink in it, it may well be that you've made a bit of a mistake. And that's why the practice is so important. So have fun with it, do lots of practice, and then perhaps you'd like to look at my next video. Uh, you'll find the link to it below, and that's gonna show you how to add beads on the different sides of the braid uh, so you can really start to extend your skills. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that, and I hope it's inspired you as well. If you're wondering where you can get hold of my innovative and patented item, the Prumihimo disc, just visit my website, prumihimo.com. And you will also be able to find there my brand new book, The Prumihimo Disc, A Fresh Approach to Kumihimo. Now, I've got lots of great ideas of designs and techniques that I want to show you, both basic and more advanced. And gradually, I'm gonna get them filmed and upload them on a regular basis. So if you're interested in seeing more, just hit the subscribe button and you'll be one of the first to know. Goodbye.